All right. Uh, now it's it's no <laughs> it's no secret that it, a channel is one of my favorite anime of all time, and I've made a review. I did finish making a review before. It was a uh, it was done on Thursday, Thursday night slash Friday morning because I stayed up a long time to do it, and I had a lot of I had a lot of export issues. It only took I, like I got it out yesterday, but I had to remove all the transitions and stuff from the video, so I'm redoing it. Because the more I worked on it, the more I realized I didn't really like the way I I did the review. So I want to redo it and get things I felt I didn't do right better. So each channel was adapted into an anime in 2011. It was animated by Studio Gokumi. It starred four main characters, which having four good main characters, it's it's hard to have a lot of main characters be interesting. But I feel like this anime did it very well. And it also had amazing voice actresses to go with them. With examples like Toru being voiced by Aoi Yuki and Ruin being voiced by, by Kaori Fukihara. Which are, those two alone are amazing voice actresses. They're very well known. And they voice very, like, very famous characters. But the entire cast as a whole is insane like for their time I'm, I'm not sure how it was back in 2011 with those voice, voice actresses because a lot of the stuff that they're famous for now are not were i'd like they weren't around then but I, so i'm not sure how like big of a voice of actress they were at the time because it's hard to kind of see what they had done at a specific year because uh my anime list doesn't have that but actually, I could have found it on another, on another website, but it should be fine. But honestly, that's it was a hefty voice uh, voice actress lineup, if, if I say so myself. So the opening of the anime is called Morning Arch, which is performed by uh, Marina Kawano. For a slice of life anime, like comparing, comparing it to other slice of life anime that I've seen, obviously... It may have been different back in 2011, which I'm, I'm starting to see. Like, maybe things, like, obviously things were more artistic back then. But if you compared it to Slice of Life anime nowadays, definitely. And around the time that I was super into Slice of Life anime, which was around 2015, 2016, 2017. It, it's very artistic. It doesn't really show too much of, like, well, it doesn't show anything pretty much of... of the any scene in the anime whereas most anime in general have openings that sh show scenes from the uh the anime i thought the lyrics and audio were actually it was it was de it was good it was good uh the entire song as a as a whole is very chill and relaxing to listen to it's like something you'd put on a loop while you're uh going to work on something for instance it's a script but i didn't do that I did do that, though, however, with the ED, which is called Humming Girl. I said that wrong my first go. but <laughs> Which is performed not by uh, Marita Kawano, but, actually, but the main cast, which is the four main actresses. I enjoyed the sound of the ED more than Morning Arch. Even though I think, technically, I think Morning Arch is a better song as a whole. Humming Girl is just more... I just enjoy listening to Humming Girl more. I can't really describe why, but like even though I I think Morning Arch is a better song, Humming Girl is more fun to listen to, which is actually what I used to listen what I listened to when writing the script, which is a uh, yeah, I guess it grew on me while I was writing it. The main cast, Toru, Run, Yuko, and Nagi are pretty good characters all around. There's nothing super special about them, which is kind of what I like about it, is that uh, they're very down-to-earth characters. They do have, like, characters in the anime have their... They seem to all have a kind of trope, in a way. Like, I don't know if the, that's the correct word to use. Like, Toru's the quiet, like, the small, quiet, uh, like, hard-working one who's a little insecure. Run is the ditzy one who's clumsy and you know I guess it's a stereotype of the of the dumb blonde but I don't think that's where they were going. Uh, Yuko is the you know I guess Yuko is very simple. She kind of like yeah very simple and has a simple with a uh, an accent I guess I, I love how the subtitles also kind of follow her accent. 
and Nagi is the kind of reserved, you know, almost nerdy type, even though she's not really a nerd. Like she, like she has the appearance of like how you would depict a, a nerd in anime or in any kind of like media, but she's more. She's not really a nerd. She's very like self conscious about how like how her how she looks. I don't think she and for once, I love how a character could be introduced while they're in a kind of group with other characters. Like yes, Nagi does pay attention a lot of attention to how Yuko looks. Because she's like she kind of does want to look like her, but she doesn't care about being popular while we're looking like her. And I feel like if she did have a body like Yuko, she would be extremely self conscious. But <laughs> then there's Yutaka, who's very hyperactive. There's Miho, who's very control. As they all also said with her nickname, the remote control. She's a control freak. In a, in a way, at least towards Yutaka, but she's also very. Uh, very kind like the characters all have like their thing even if they're weird like Sachio's but the interactions between the characters are really nice and they don't seem to conflict with each other too often even minor issues and problems and arguments don't seem to be of like like they don't seem to cut deep or deep enough that you would, like it would threaten their friendship in any way there's uh there's some strange things too like Sachio's infatuation with foreheads and uh Toru's sexual harassment I guess is what you could call it it's almost sexual assault almost. <laughs> I guess you could call it that but I guess it's it's in it's in humor so that makes it okay <laughs> the jokes aside uh the plot as a whole is kind of why I remade this entire review the plot is like it's like the point is that there is no point there is no plot there's no plot the, and i think that's why i needed to redo it because i tried to look for a plot when there wasn't it's like oh well what about taro's uh like how she always felt like she was being she didn't want to be left alone it's like oh she's a deeper character because no no she's not a deeper character because of that it's just an episodic feeling because of the situation she's in is not a plot. <laughs> it is a reaction to just a reaction to a situation, which is normal in a slice of life anime to have that kind of reaction, whether or not there's a plot or not. A plot would be a kind of guiding force, unbeknownst to the characters, that takes them from point A to point B. Whereas this anime doesn't really have a point A or a point B. It's just life. It's them reacting to the everyday day to day situations that they're in. You know the good moments. あ、いつもありがとうね。あの、ここの男子の人数が間違ってましたので、修正しておきました。良かったですか。あら、本当こっちのミスだったのね。ありがとう。助かったわ。え、とんでもないです。とおる。とんでもないですやって。ええ子や
I think that's why this anime is so good to me. I like why I enjoyed it so much is that it's a lot different. It's 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 different in a way. Like for instance, if I was to compare it like how I did before with Comic Girls, I th- which I was sorely mistaken to do so. Kaos Chan, she wants to uh, she wants to have it her manga serialized, which is a plot line. You can give her some backstory to that plot line. Like how did she come up? to be wanting to draw manga and stuff like that. You can give her a backstory and then she like, while she's attempting to complete this goal, uh, she has ups and downs. Whereas in this anime, there is no ultimate goal. There's no, like there's no conflict. There's no big bad. There's no superpowers. There's like, there's nothing like that. And I think that's why this anime is special to me. And I think to a lot of other people is because it's not special. It kind of th- it it takes the concept of a slice of life anime because a lot of slice of life anime kind of like try to be unique in their own way, and I think the fact that this anime tried to not be unique is what makes it unique. Is it removed all these like oh the high school, high, the high school kid who wakes up and is a like and, you know there's aliens invade or this high like high school kid who you know, meets this succubus or get gets caught up in some abnormal situation which leads into some shenanigans or <laughs> or ha- pilots a mech because it's the end of the world and whatever. Like, those kind of situations. I think that's... You remove them and you just go, I want a almost grassroots kind of anime where it's there's no ultimate conflict. They just... It's it's like it's it's a difference between trying to swim against the current and then riding the current. This anime is an anime that rides the current. It lets the story tell itself, and the and I think that's why it's so good. It's because it's not trying to be anything other than four girls enjoying their lives and experiencing new things in their high school and and as, as high school girls. It's basic. It's simple, and that's it. Like that, I, that's it. And I think that's why it's so good. It's not trying to be too much. It's not trying to fit some weird supernatural thing into it. And I think honestly, that's why I enjoyed it so much. Because I've had my my fair share of anime that are abnormal, are just weird, or like kick ass awesome. For instance, anime like One Punch Man or anime like Asobi Asabase. Or, or Comic Girls. Like, Comic Girls is a nice one. New game. Abnormal situation. And there's, no heart, and there's no men either. But it's also, it's all very weird how a lot of the time in Slice of Life, like, Slice of Life anime with female veins, there's hardly any men or no men at all. But all right. That's, that's, that, that was the point I was trying to get across that I could not get across in my other one. I kind of just said... I like the anime, but I can't justify the the reason why I like the anime. No, bullshit. I can justify it. I just need time to think about it. I just tried to bullshit my way through making a review without having any reason for liking the anime when it's my favorite. That's... No. That's that's stupid. That's why A Channel, if I was to give it a rating, it'd probably be 8 or 9 out of 10. It's not the best anime out there. No way. In the world is an anime like A Channel gonna be anywhere near as the best. I'm definitely also highballing it because I'm I'm biased as shit. Like if you could tell, Toru is my fucking profile picture. I didn't even mean to swear, but like A Channel, yeah. Like no matter where A Channel sits, even if A Channel was one of the worst anime out there, it would still be put up at like at an eight or nine. It, even if people hated it. I would still hold it high because it is an anime that I enjoyed. Obviously, people will disagree. It's like, oh, well, how could you have... Like, it's not that entertaining. It's not even funny. It's like, it's not trying to be funny. It's not trying to be entertaining. It's just them reacting to it, to stuff in their daily day lives. If it's funny, then it's funny. If it's not, then it's not. It's That's it. Just like real life. And I think that's the point. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm feeling a lot better about this review, and I definitely over-edited my last review. That's why I wouldn't export it all. But thanks for watching. Hopefully enjoyed. If you have any anime you want me to critique or 
or review. I guess review and critique are kind of the same thing, huh? But if you have any critiques about this review, I will also post the last review that I did, like the original review, just so you can see how bad it was. <laughs> it doesn't have transitions. I think I said that already, but it's fine. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Just leave a leave a comment on what anime you want me to review next, if you have any interesting ones. And uh, yeah, Toru's best girl. It's indisputable. Shut up.